Hello, hello, hello. Are you there? Connecting to audio. Hi. Hello again. How are you? <laughs> hello. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. I never actually looked to see even who had signed up for this. So it might just be us. Have a double check. Hi. Um, but I'm going to be teaching you a really cool little breathwork technique, um, which is amazing. Who have we got? Ooh. Yeah, so have you noticed a real difference, have you, since you, when you, when you're consistently practicing your breathwork in terms of how it manifests in the rest of your life and business and everything? And I'm gonna t and I'm gonna talk into why too. Okay, well, we've got six people registered, so <laughs> maybe okay, we'll cool. give it a couple of seconds because I did also post into the group say I might be five minutes behind. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be talking exactly why there is a significant difference in manifestation when your breath is under, like not under control. We don't want to ever be controlling our breath, but we want to have consciousness of our breath. Mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah because okay. if you imagine like you're driving you know when you drive your car and it's like mm. you arrive somewhere and it's like oh, i don't have any idea how i just got here mm. and yet you've managed to avoid like if somebody slammed their brakes on you'd 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 break mm. you've got enough mm. consciousness to react but if you were under under the influence of drugs or alcohol that you consciousness, yeah, and you wouldn't break. Yeah. So it's the same yeah. thing with our breath. Yeah. It's having, it's having, uh, yeah, it's just a slight, a slight difference in consciousness. Hmm. That's interesting. I, it's funny because when people challenge me to not think about your breathing, I can't not think about my breathing. <laughs> and then I, and that, and that influences how I control my breathing and how all of a sudden it doesn't feel it doesn't feel natural yeah it doesn't feel you then um, you then start feeling like you can't breathe too isn't it it's like i'm, I'm yeah, losing yeah. breath. what's going on like when you start yeah. to think about it it's really weird i do that yeah. too yeah, yeah that's weird. it is very strange mm. I, I love mm. the i love the body so mm. let's have a look we've got anybody else in the waiting room we can just get started and put the old um recording out there it's a funny time of the day yeah 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 people have actually got lives <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jobs. <laughs> Unlike me. Jill, we are like... <laughs> <laughs> little Miss uh, little Freedom here. Um, stop everything and breathe. I know, I know. I just had a client as well, though. I've had... Um, how many clients have I had today? I think I've had three clients today, so I'm slowly... Oh, hang on. There's Miss Michelle. She can't find the... She can't find the thingy. Hang on. I'll um, just invite her in. Yeah, I sort of, I came to the end of that last session. I was like, oh, my brain. And my brain's actually ready now for a, a nice cup of coffee and a rest. Mm. <laughs> Here we go. Where are you, Miss Michelle? I'll just tell her the links are in the email. believe I didn't catch up with you when I went to the mount I know I know that was silly <laughs> yeah we were there for three weeks wow um, right right most uh sometimes in the marina but also for a good week at um the breaker bay or you know that little bay where all the yachts are moored right oh, outside oh. the mount I loved seeing all your little boat pics yeah <laughs> so nice such a lovely way to be just free oh, that's isn't it? lovely especially when you're on the move yeah absolutely mm. I, I actually connected with a lady um last year she was going to end up coaching with me but she didn't in the end she was working on the super yachts oh yeah and yeah. and she just couldn't time zone like the time zones just kept moving around and she just couldn't mm. fit like the reg regular coaching in um 
but I connected with her on Instagram and I follow her now and she's just in the most beautiful places all the time. She, wow. she does yoga like in these just serene, mm. it's, just, it's just amazing. Wow. She gets to travel all be. over the world. Wow. Mm. Wow. And on really spanky yachts. And on really, really nice <laughs> boats. Yeah, although she does have the pleasure of cleaning them and yeah, yeah. <laughs> them and, mm. Okay, so let's get into this. How are you going, Michelle? Yeah, good. I'm working, but I blocked out the time in my calendar. Oh, bless you. Don't contact me. Don't call me. I'll call you. I said to the work peeps. I love it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so all of the links were in the original email I sent about the open week. So let me send it again or I'll put them in the group. Yeah, yeah, maybe in the group. Because I did, I sat here searching in my email. I'm like, it's got to be here, but I'm just not kind of showing up for me. <laughs> the other thing is when you register, add to calendar, add to Google Calendar, and then it will pop up mm. with a reminder and also the link. Yeah. That's what I didn't do. <laughs> I do that normally, yeah. I hadn't got, because the registration links for the other things were in the group, I managed, yeah. Uh, okay. And <laughs> the other thing is that, um, for those yeah for you like it sorts the time zone difference out as well it actually works it out for you yeah i love it <laughs> because i've had a couple of the americans that i don't know they're like completely cold coming into this um the open week and they're like literally spinning on their heads like i don't get the time zones just don't yeah. try just let the thing do it for you it'll be much easier stop yeah. panicking stop <laughs> panicking <laughs> <laughs> They're trying so to probably work out, working like, out whether they can make it in the first place, right? Yeah, they're like, I. Oh, it's like you're 15 hours ahead minus a day. I'm like, no, you're, conf you're confusing me now. Just let, mm -hmm. let Google do it. So, yes. So, breathing, breath work. My journey with breath work began, um, interestingly enough, last year, considering that I overcame um, chronic anxiety a couple of years previous to that. I'd had a lot of resistance around breath work. And I think it was because when you've suffered with chronic anxiety, your breath becomes such a focus. And it's almost what we were saying before, Deb, like when I focused on it, it kind of made me anxious. Mm -hmm. I'd kind of see my, I'd, I'd find myself feeling like I couldn't, I'd forgotten how to breathe or I'd find myself feeling like it was difficult to really bring my breath in um, you know, into my diaphragm because I'd actually changed all of my muscle structure with being anxious for so long and having bad posture because of the anxiety, that whole, you know, caving in. So breathing felt difficult and it felt a huge effort. Some of these breath works, these um, sessions just felt like effort and yeah, I guess I shied away mm. from breath work until I discovered Soma breath. And when I discovered Soma breath, something magical happened. And I think part of it is that it's a lot like me. So it mixes movement, music, meditation and breath work together. So I'm such a dynamic person. Like I love the idea that I can sit there and breath work and snake my body and make noises. And, you know, we dance before we breathe and it's all very kind of yeah dynamic it's very me so other breath works the pranayama has just felt very meditative and very straight and that's not like me so finding soma was very authentic to me um but i've learned i've learned so much about breath and breath's place in building a business which is why it's now part of the academy like i'm going to help you guys to breathe to breathe consciously and when I say consciously, it is not by control. That's not what we want to be doing. We never actually want to be controlling anything, right? We want to be in trust. We want to be in flow. That's the quantum coach approach is to be in trust that everything can happen easily. But there is a connection. So we, we can't live without breathing. So by letting go of the conscious control of the breathing, we're actually leaving it to that primitive part of the brain that often has us in not so great places because it's the survival brain, right? 
and our survival brain is linked up to all those emotions and experiences of our past. So when we have those unconscious triggers, things that trigger those past stories, anxiety around money, for example, if we've got trauma on our tracks around money experiences where we've felt fear, then as soon as that feeling triggers, unconsciously our breath is changing and it's becoming like erratic, it's becoming disrupted in its rhythm, it might be becoming shallow into the chest rather than deep into the belly and we have no idea. And this was part of me recovering from anxiety was wearing my, my life watch and starting to see my breath changes and my BP changes and my heart rate changes and starting to see how, oh my gosh, like I'm in stress right now, even though I don't necessarily feel it, but that accumulative stress throughout the day, throughout the day would end up then in the anxiety, the panic attack, which I then was like, well, why am I panicky now? Like there's nothing right now in this moment that would necessarily tip me over the edge. I don't get it, but it was accumulative. And you know what they're discovering with children now is that the complexity of our lives, all of the toys, all of the things, all of the choices, all of these adult influences, they're creating this same accumulative stress in the body. So their bodies are unconsciously creating these patterns of survival response. And they're getting stressed. They're becoming anxious. They're finding their own ways to control and it's manifesting as the attention deficit and the OCD and the ODD. So like this is something that as, as adults and parents, we really wanna get con control over, consciousness over. The other thing is that the two are connected together. So stress causes the shallow breathing and shallow breathing causes the stress. So we want to, what we're going to be doing today is diaph diaphragmatic breath work. Just consciously breathing into the diaphragm so that, you know, if you wear, like Michelle, I know you wear this, if you put your guard guardian on and it triggers that you're over breathing, you can literally just stop and do this breath work. And it will bring your heart back into coherence, your be breath back into coherence, all of those inner body things back into coherence because that discoherent and irregular breath, it not only creates all of these unhealthy things that, I mean, I said, I think, I'm not sure who I was on a call. There's been so many calls in the last few days that I don't know which way is up, but I actually said like, I do not meet a coach now who hasn't got some sort of autoimmune dis um, disorder some sort of like, you know, um, adrenal fatigue, or they've got sleep issues. And it's because it's the constant stress. It's a stressful environment growing a business. And we're, we're letting that breath get into discoherence and irregular irregularity, which is causing those things like adrenal fatigue, anxiety, um, even things like, you know, that mind clutter, where we can't remember the words and we can't remember what we're doing and it's we can't focus. All of these things are related to the breath as well as blood pressure. I had a client the other day who she's she's been very much in a in a you know a burnout place. She keeps burning out very 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 fast and I said, "Well, can you go and check in on your blood pressure?" And she was like, "Why would I check in on my blood pressure?" And I was like, well, if your blood pressure is um, is high, it's an indication of, of, of hyperventilation, too much shallow breath. She's like, I would never have thought to go and look at that. And the thing is as well, like we wanna know your consistent blood pressure, your blood pressure trends, not just the blood pressure in the moment, because the blood pressure in the moment is very different to that you know, blood pressure trend. And if we know the blood pressure trend and the blood pressure trend is slightly on the high side, you're guaranteed to, to, to actually have a higher level of stress, which is leading to the over breathing, the shallow breathing, that lack of coherence, that irregularity. Now, what the hell has that got to do with man manifestation? We manifest who we are, not what we want. So if energetically we are incoherent, 
we are a mismatch for the universal energy which is coherent. Universal energy, the fundamental energy of the universe is coherent. It is balanced, it is in flow, right? So suddenly you've got an energetic mismatch of who you are to what you're in, which doesn't manifest in what you want. So when we can change that energy, we can enable that, that you know, um, we call it higher self, we call it that like cosmic wisdom that when you're in meditation and those messages come in, right? Why do those messages download and come through when you're in meditation? Because you're in coherence. You're in heart coherence, you're in breath coherence, you're in the same flow of energy as the universe around you, which allows... It's a receiving energy for the wisdom to come through. As long as you've got your eye on your vision and it's circulating, right? It's a circulation. The messages are coming through, the inspired action's coming through, you're in flow. So breath has this massive like relation to manifestation, which is why breath work should be something that we do every single day. So as part of being in the academy this week, You've got access to um, a 22 minute um, breath meditation for the morning. And it focuses on, you know, creating those feelings of gratitude and intention and vision. So I've got a Google file that I'm going to share after this session um, to those people who have put their hands up and want it. I think you definitely have, haven't you, Michelle? Um, So you can do that in the morning. You can also do it at night. They say that. Um, I don't know what the theory is, but there's some theory around 22 minutes. 22 minutes is some divine number of minutes to meditate. It's like super powerful. I have, I, I should really know why. Maybe it's something to do with the number two, because the number two is that balance and harmony. And a two minute meditation would be a little bit too little. I have no idea, but there is something in the 22 minutes and there's science now, scientific study that have said at least 20 minutes in the morning and at least 20 minutes at night creates fundamental changes in your life and abundance. But what about if there's a bloody long time between morning and evening, right? So what about all those times in between where you are feeling that stress. And like I say, we don't necessarily notice it. So having a tool to notice it is powerful. They reckon that most people breathe between 15 and 22 breaths a minute, which is actually officially over breathing. And that a really healthy breath rate is between two and eight, two and eight breaths a minute. And that's what the super yogis breathe. And when you're breathing in the right way, obviously that that little, um, you know, whatever happens in our mitochondria, where the oxygen exchanges with the glucose and the ATP is created, and that's your energy, that's your mitochondrial energy, which obviously is at the center of all the functions of your body. When you're breathing in the right balance like that, that is super, that's working super well, which obviously um, decreases aging, There's also the the stem cell part as well, because when we're breathing correctly, our stem cells are working correctly as well. So we can move with the breath, these stem cells around the body to, to areas that we need to heal. And that healing is always happening as well within the body. Whereas as you start to get older, that stem cell, um, it activity starts to lessen, but not if you breathe right, not if you've got the right the, the, the good, coherent, rhythmic breath. Because you've got the right balance of oxygen and, and CO2 and, and the body's doing everything that it should be, right? So breath is so important. And between morning and evening, there is a hundred times that you might actually unconsciously be in stress. Holding your breath, holding your stomach muscles, hyper breathing, shallow breathing, so to have that consciousness, we can drop into um, into this diaphragmatic breath that we're going to do together. Um, one thing that we're going to talk about tomorrow, if you signed up for the quantum coach approach session, which is where you're going to get an insight into what we do in the quantum leap intensive, which is where you certify in the quantum coach approach, basically across the six months um, that we do in the academy. And we're going to talk about victim consciousness. So there are levels of consciousness 
that we go through as we move towards abundance and victim consciousness is right down low. It is like the lowest level of consciousness. It's when we're constantly reacting to the world around us. We're giving our power away to our circumstances. It's everybody else's fault. Everything's fault. Everything's working against us. That victim consciousness, if you can imagine that reptilian brain and the survival brain and how it's basically firing off 300,000 times a day (laughs) and how that affects manifestation in terms of that coherence, the coherence in the body, the breath, the heart (laughs) versus the coherence of energy in the, I mean, suddenly you start to see, right, why things don't happen for people who are in that victim consciousness, who have those victim stories. But when you start to change, like, and this is where it can be two ways. You can change the narrative and you can change the stories and work this way, or you can change from within and change the breath and work this way. So you can work in both directions to actually alter the energy of the body and, and kind of heighten, maximize that, that, um, that manifestation. It's powerful in breathing differently, you can actually start to see life differently. You can actually start to see different perspectives because the survival brain switches off long enough for you to see another story. And from another story, we can take different action. We can begin to allow, we can begin to switch out of this survival brain here and actually ask an empowering question which switches us into this neocortex and this, you know, um, evolved brain, our super brain, our soul brain. And we can actually start creating different outcomes through innovation and invention and, and something new rather than everything that we've had in the past. It's so powerful. Breath can take you there. Reaction. I can't afford it. Done. There's no way you go from that. I can't afford it. I don't do it. How can I afford it? I see the vision. I know what I want. I trust in the universe to co-create. I know I'm super powerful. I believe in myself. Suddenly we've got options. And again, breath work. Breath work can help you with that shift from survival brain to soul brain. Because you slow down the breath and in slowing down the breath, we come into consciousness We come into that meditative state. The survival response switches off because there's coherence in the breath, in the heart, in the the blood pressure. Super, super powerful. So we're going to jump into this this breath work. Does anybody have any questions? I think I like went off on a massive tangent there. No? Awesome. Okay. So, oh, go on, Deb. Oh, I was just going to say, I didn't know or didn't hear about your um, recording that you were giving away, but I'm interested. <laughs> yes, Thank definitely. You. There's a whole file. So there's the creative visualization in there from the Q3 planning. Cool. And yeah. there's the breath work and there's also something else as well, which is useful. Um, oh, my God, what's in there? Can't remember. A third thing. Oh, Good to breathe. <laughs> Quick, breathe. Okay, so this is also available on YouTube as well. So it's not just, it's not, this isn't mine. This is a Soma Breath um, tool. So you can actually you can go onto YouTube and, and listen to this as well. Michelle says her mind fog is huge and her life watch always says your degree, yeah, some degree of stress. It, it really doesn't surprise me because of that work environment. You know, it's like you're, you're in an environment where there's a lot happening around you all the time. So you're going to have to maintain a, a really high degree of consciousness to not slip into reaction, into other people's stress. That's why I wanted to jump on this one live. First day back at work, I already know a colleague's father passed away. You know, director's really insensitive. That kind of stuff. Like, I know I'm going to need this today. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a really helpful tool. This is such a helpful tool. And it's really relaxing too. So we'll jump in. And all you're going to do... Is focus 
focus on and, then, and this is two breaths per minute. So you so you think of these yogis. This is how they breathe normally. This slow, consistent, rhythmic breath. Now what helps me is to keep listening to that rolling. It starts with a rolling wave sound. So imagining my breath as a, as a wave. It's rolling in, it's rolling out, it's rolling in, it's rolling out. But there's um there's a really there's a you're going in shorter than you are out in this on this breath work. And we really want to focus on having our feet on the floor, our hands open in the receiving position, so just nice and relaxed. Our chakras aligned. You can lie down if if it's easier. And we actually want to, it's diaphragmatic because we bring the, brelly, the breath in to the belly first. We fill the belly first and then we naturally allow it to rise. There's no force. There should be no sound either. It's a silent breath. So it's not like you see these kind of, you know, breath works, the Wim Hof where it's like. <laughs> it's like, there's none of that. It's beautifully relaxing, silent breath in through the nose, out through the nose. Gentle, no force, just becoming really relaxed. Gently allowing, trying to go as slowly as you can until you get the rhythm of the count. There's a count on the sounds, starting in the belly. Naturally letting it rise into the te ch chest and then just, uh, you can even make a sound to let it out. So there's no force on the out breath either. So we're going to get started.
was that? Very nice. That felt really natural. So like it's the nice. perfect amount of, yeah, perfect amount of time on both. It's mm. like they knew the size of our lungs. <laughs> that, that's good because I actually used to really struggle with the with the in breath. I used to struggle to get that much air in. So I was going to mm. say if you notice that it's hard to because I was a shallow breather, anxiety. Mm. So if you notice that it's hard, I don't know, Michelle or anybody on the replay, it's hard to get that eight count in. There are a few things that we can do. Number one is we can do some um, um, anaerobic exercise. So in the morning, you can actually hold your breath. So you can breathe in, breathe all the way out and just do like sit-ups, lunges, press-ups, step ups anything that gets the heart moving that isn't like a burpee or something you know it has to be in control we don't want you passing out but you try and do as many press ups for example as you can do with your breath held out before you have to breathe back in and that increases your um, oxygen efficiency you can do the no the nasal breathing too so in swap to the other side And then breathe in on the same side. And swap. So like you can do that for 15 minutes. I used to do that whilst um, watching Short and Street, which is my sin on an evening. My seven o'clock sin. It's the only TV I like to watch. Um, and the other thing is anaerobic walking. So you can, um, again, breathe in. Breathe all the way out. Hold your nose. And then walk around in circles until you need to breathe. Stop. Breathe out. Hold your nose and walk around in circles. And all of this is increasing your, your um, belly laughs are so good for relaxing the diaphragm. Yeah, so that was the second thing I was gonna say. You can actually lie down on the floor and consciously breathe, do the diaphragm breath diaphragmatic breath and just start to learn a new muscle memory belly laughing is great for loosening those tight muscles yoga is amazing if you feel any tightness I feel terrible tightness all over my front still from 10 years kickboxing mm -hmm. so I'm using the yoga to loosen all this out and it's really helping with my breath work so yoga is another of the integration sessions that we've got um, later on in the week. I, Ivy's just amazing. Um, and one other thing as well, if you feel any pain while you're breathing, because some people do, they, they're, some, it can be held trauma, it can be old injuries, is to utilize those stem cells. So as we start to rhythmically breathe, and little stem cells start to move and we can consciously move them to where we have areas that need healing. So um, my mum, who um, she's in stage four cancer, she's got breast, spine, she's been in phenomenal amounts of pain, started breathing with me in January. After six weeks, uh, one morning she was doing the breath work and she had all this pain in her neck here and she'd been having trouble moving her uh, um, neck. And I'd been telling her, I was like, just imagine these stem cells moving. And she said she just felt this intense rush of heat to her neck, almost like somebody had like sprayed her with deep heat, she said. And it was really, really hot, really, really burny. And then it just released. And she hasn't had any of that pain in her neck since. Wow. I know. I know. I know. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. So like, we don't know what goes on in these wee bodies. I've got a client who has had um, like a, br a visible bruise bruising on her right ankle and lower leg all of her life. And she believed that it was like almost scars. She used to get picked up by her ankles by an abusive grandfather, like a chicken. And she felt like it was, um, you know, just, just almost a visible thing. And she had varicose mm. veins. Just the trauma work, the, the skin colors changing on her ankle. 
So our body does reflect the internal trauma that we have. And I think we don't know enough about the superpowers of the body yet to know what's possible. So we always have to be very open-minded with these things. Um, so yeah, so I hope that was helpful. I recommend using that breath at nighttime. It's a beautiful going to sleep breath, mm. especially with that beautiful natural um, retention at the end. So obviously it's hard to breathe out for 16 beats. So usually some of that 16 beats can be just natural breath hold, which is actually the natural rhythm of the breath is to breathe in, to breathe out and hold. In, out, hold. I mean, actually, I really like that type of breath and especially when laying down, I have no trouble holding, breathing out for 16. Oh, lovely. You have trouble because I'm sitting at a desk. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind it's of a lot natural. easier lying down, definitely. Mm. Mm. And it's going to switch on the parasympathetic nervous system. It's going to help you go to sleep. It's going to um, get that rest and digest thing going. So like digest your dinner so that you don't have that all gurgling around trying to keep you awake. But I also suggest it during the day. Like it doesn't have to be 10 minutes. It can be five minutes just to bring your heart into coherence. You can put your hand on your heart and imagine the mind and the heart breathing in sync together. Focusing, just slowing down. We slow down those brain waves. We slow down our energetic frequency and we start to come into coherence with that universal energy. And, and that that's where we manifest. So... And we download those messages of that inspired action. We get out of that stress. So yeah, so Wonderful. that's me. Thank you, that's great. And that is available on YouTube as well. It's called um, Diaphragmatic Breathing Exercise for Stress Release. And it's on the Soma channel, Soma Breath. Soma um, Breath, okay. And if you would like more details about Soma Breath, they're amazing. It's an amazing community, heaps of free resources. Just let me know and I can connect you. But we do, we, we do, we will be doing more and more breath work in the academy, which I think is amazing. <laughs> cool. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to jump idea. off and lovely to see you guys. Thanks, Claire. You're welcome. See you, Have a nice day, Michelle. Bye. Bye. Speak to you soon, Deb.